Hi, good afternoon. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? I've got someone at the back letting me know that. Um, so first of all, thanks very much for coming along this afternoon. Uh, my name's Sharon Johnson. I'm happy to stay over here. Um, I have responsibility for quality and reg affairs for Catalan. And uh, really what that means is that fundamentally, I have responsibility for making sure that the patients that receive the products that Catalan manufactures receive those in a reliable way. And what I want to talk to you about today is really how, from a systems point of view, we ensure regulatory excellence and ensure that we keep Catalan and our customers out of regulatory harm's way. So just a little bit of background. Um, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the publications and communications that we seem to hear, if not daily, certainly on a very frequent basis, about drug shortage, about warning letters that are issued. All of those are increasing on an annual basis and are expected to increase further. And in fact, in the US, the FDA have put measures in place under law to actually ensure that companies notify them of uh, drug shortage or potential drug shortages. And also, there's uh, processes coming forward where companies will actually have to provide their metrics of their quality performance directly to the FDA on at least an annual basis. So it's really important that as a company, you have processes and practices in place that ensure regulatory inspection readiness and quality of the products that are provided. So really, when it comes down to exceeding patients' expectations for reliable supply, which I know is the responsibility um, certainly of myself and if not everybody in this room, it really starts from having an overall holistic approach to quality management. It starts at the top with leadership and discipline, and they set the culture and the tone. So certainly, we have processes in place whereby our executive team have oversight of our quality performance on a monthly basis and in a lot of cases on a weekly basis. One uh, QMS quality management system to ensure really that the practices and procedures globally across the um, 29 sites that we certainly have is uh, consistent, global and importantly current. As all of you will be aware, the regulations, again, change uh, rapidly, they change frequently, and it's really important that as a manufacturer and a supplier that those uh, regulations are kept current. A balanced scorecard, so again, from a uh, total company point of view, having metrics that are linked to the company goals and objectives and also our customer expectations is absolutely important. We're going to talk a lot more about inspection readiness as I go through the next few slides. But really, the approach that we've taken is how do we integrate all the various metrics, the procedures and the practices into an overall holistic gauge that's actionable that really measures our inspection readiness. And fundamentally, any management system has to be customer and patient focused. And by achieving that, by making sure that the company's out of regulatory harm's way and having confidence in that, we can ensure reliable supply. So in the next series of slides here, I'm going to just go over in a high level detail the approach that we've taken in Catalan to ensure regulatory inspection readiness, being inspection ready every day, and really that we're not um, going to be faced with any surprises. So what does it actually mean? It really comes down to having a rigor and a rhythm around regulatory excellence. It means an everyday discipline around the way that we perform, the way that we act, and the way that we ensure that the products that we're manufactured are right first time and actually are delivered to our customers when they expect it. What you see up here is uh, a number of the various um, systems within the quality management system that we are measuring on a daily, real-time basis. So you'll see them under categories for regulatory. So no surprises to anyone, I'm sure, that we're measuring the occurrence of recalls, field alerts, the regulatory inspections that we have, the observations that we may get from those regulatory inspections. Are we closing those things out in a timely fashion and in, due to the commitments that we've made to the regulators? And are we avoiding repeats? 
and also are we up to date with our APRs, are those being completed in a timely fashion and provided to our customers and the regulators. Again under systems, the corrections, CAPA, training, our corporate audit program, the supplier qualification, uh, customer audits, our internal self-audit at the sites, calibration, change control and preventative maintenance. Each of these are measured at the site level and then we're rolling those up into an overall scorecard which I'll show you in a moment. And then obviously with exceptions. You know, we all live in the real world and stuff happens. It's really our responsibility to make sure that that's a rare event and that when it does happen, you've got a quality management system that's capable of detecting those things before there's any impact on the patient. So again, we are monitoring, as I'm sure many of you are, the occurrence of complaints, the types of complaints, are there any themes, and are there any um, holistic actions that we need to be taking company-wide, and likewise with deviations. What happens is that the, each of those metrics, as I say, is being measured on an ongoing um, basis. And then on a monthly basis, we have a, a refresh and the scorecard is shared with uh, the senior leaders in the company. So a busy slide here, but just to kind of illustrate the discipline and rhythm from a, on a monthly basis. What you'll see, this is a tool that is uh, web enabled within our network. Um, so you're looking to select the report month, you enter your site and the period that you're monitoring. And for each of those elements that I shared with you on the previous slide, they have, uh, they're all weighted. So their contribution to regulatory risk is a function of the, t the category and the, the way that the regulators and certainly our customers as well view those uh, categories. Within each of those, as you can see here, so what you see in the scorecard is that for each of the um, categories, and you have, if I can read it correctly, for each of the categories, there is a, a ranking from one to five, where one is low risk, you've got a good level of control, you have few exceptions, and if you do have exceptions, you've got a process in place for managing them, and then you'll go two, three, four, and five, and the category five would be a definition that means that you've got a level of control that you're, you're not satisfied with, that you have repeat occurrences, you're not closing things out in a timely fashion. So each of those elements has a risk ranking within each of them from one to five. And essentially what's happening is each month for each of the elements, the sites will self-assess, they'll look at their metrics and they will complete the spreadsheet and the, the statements for each of those risks, they'll actually identify what statement describes the control and performance of that particular element in any given month. So have you had any overdues? Have you had any reoccurrences? Are you in control? And then that's, that's monitored. It then rolls up and you have a calculated um, risk ranking effectively that is, takes into account the weighted risk of the element and then you end up with a cumulative score. It's really been adapted from an FMEA model, if uh, people are familiar with that, where you have occurrence, you have your ability to detect, and then you have the severity of that um, event. And you get a cumul cumulative score of high, medium, and low. Within the tool as well, if any of the individual elements or whether the collective roll-up is anything other than low, so if it's medium or it's high, there's a requirement to complete the tool to identify the very specific actions you're going to take in order to address that issue and drive that score to low. At a catalent level, we have a cross-company goal every year that you must ex um, achieve a low risk ranking for inspection readiness, and that's measured at all the executive staff, it's measured at our BUs, and it's measured at the sites. So everybody has the same um, responsibility and buy-in to actually delivering this goal. So you can see here just the numbers that translate into the high, medium, and low risk ranking, and those actions are then monitored as we uh, move forward. 
So it's all very well having a tool, it's all very well having a goal, but what does it actually drive uh, directly um, from a practice and a behaviours point of view? Um, within Catalan and within the company, we are, we are very transparent. We share the data um, internally, externally, on a, on a regular basis. And what you see here is the real score up to August of the inspection readiness um, scores for the, the Catalan sites on a 12-month rolling performance. And we're looking at this every single month. I've, uh, the, the numbers are real. We've obviously um, not put the sites down here, but certainly our customers, uh, we share this with the uh, um, complete sites, uh, very visible, very transparent, um, nothing to hide because it's the only way that we're able to partner and then understand collectively where are the areas that we've got to focus on. But this scorecard is reviewed by our sites, it's reviewed by our business units, so they'll look at the sites that are within their segment. It's in reviewed by the executive leadership team and it's also reviewed by the board on a quarterly basis. So a lot of discussion, a lot of dialogue, a lot of transparency, and we've certainly found that you improve what you measure. The effectiveness of the actions to improve are discussed in detail. And what's also important is we'll also identify those areas where sites have had a stable low score. What is it that they're doing at the site that is actually sustaining and maintaining that performance on an ongoing basis so that we can translate that across to the other sites so that there's some leveraging of those best practices. As I say, this is shared and it's reviewed with customers on a regular basis, either through routine um, review meetings or um, by request or ad hoc if the need arises. And what it really is um, driving is ensuring that Catalan and our customers are kept out of regulatory harm's way. Again, as I said before, having goals, having processes, having tools to drive performance, it's all very well, but what does it actually mean when it comes down to regulatory performance? Because that's really the test of any internal tool, is how do you get viewed externally? So again, this is real data. Um, like many of you here, we are under constant regulatory scrutiny. We have 50 plus inspections globally around the, our network uh, from many different regulators. We see um, the, what we're, sorry, what we're also doing is when we have those inspections, we're also looking at what are the occurrence of observations? How does this relate to our internal measure of inspection readiness? So we're looking at FDA, ANVISA, MHRA, the local country inspections in the countries where our sites are located, and also the additional um, countries that we're maybe like yourselves increasingly starting to see. What we're then doing is we actually look at our performance against published industry data. So what you see there on the right is data that you can readily find through the FDA portals, just focuses on um, FDA data here. The number of observations per 483 issued, the number of US FDA inspections that resulted in an F uh, Form 483 being issued to the site, and also the average number of observations per, per audit. And what you can see there consistently is that the Catalan performance exceeds the industry average with respect to, certainly with respect to the FDA. When I think about some of the other national authorities that we get inspected by, we've had no critical observations in the five years that I've certainly been with the company, we've seen a decreasing occurrence of major observations and minors going forward. So this really validates the tool and the practices and the processes that we've put in place to drive that rigor and discipline. So really what do patients um, need and they certainly deserve from um, reliable drug supply? Fundamentally, for everybody in this room, and certainly my responsibility um, is ensuring that reliable supply, quality, and compliance 
is in your control. Putting in place systems, processes, and rigor does drive the performance that's needed for reliable supply to patients. I hope that through the um, brief update I've provided here that that clearly demonstrates if you have strong processes and tools in place, you've got discipline and uh, uh, disciplined leadership that you can drive improvement on an ongoing basis. An integrated approach to metrics provides focus and action. We truly believe that you improve what you measure. And for those of you that are in the room, if you are familiar with the FDA initiative around metrics, um, probably within the next 12 to 15 months, based on my uh, um, interactions with some of the working groups, is that all companies that are supplying product into the US will be uh, required to submit metrics data to the FDA on an annual basis. So again, having those processes and those measures in place through your normal rhythm um, is going to help with your um, delivery to the FDA in that respect. And on the FDA metrics program, Catalan is certainly involved with ISPE. There's an ISPE pilot occurring, and we have sites that are participating in that actively at the moment, and also with Xavier University, who are also working with the FDA. So um, it's a process that's gaining uh, momentum across the industry, and we should expect to see something on that in uh, the coming months. And it's always important to be transparent and open. I don't think anybody achieves anything by being anything other than transparent and open. Be an inspection ready every day, because at the end of the day, nobody wants any surprises. So just like to thank you for your attention. As I say, a very brief um, overview of the approach um, across the Catalan network. Happy to take any questions, uh, but otherwise, thank you for your attention.